Hi, I'm Sister Teresa Marie. I'm originally from the great state of Michigan in the United States, and I am currently assigned to our mission convent in Clifton Heights, Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Sister Alina Marie. I grew up in Georgia, and I am currently assigned at our mother house in Monroe, New York. Hi, I'm Sister Mary Emadonia. I was born, raised, and guess what? I'm currently assigned here in the Philippines. Uh, right now, I am helping with our formation sisters. Welcome to our mother house at Mary Crest in Monroe, New York. We are so happy to take you on this virtual tour together. Come, let me show you a little bit of our life as parish visitors of Mary Immaculate. We're the parish visitors of Mary Immaculate. The Blessed Mother is our patron and our model. We seek to imitate her, especially in her visitation to her cousin Elizabeth um, by carrying Jesus within us, like she carried him to Elizabeth. And as she magnified the Lord, that's what we seek to do. So we have this contemplative missionary spirit together. Where we're magnifying the Lord and carrying Jesus to others. The first part of our name, Parish Visitors, is because we visit. We go door to door visiting the families that the pastor has asked us to visit, especially we're seeking those who've fallen away from the practice of their faith um, using a one-on-one, -on -one, person to person, friendly approach in a very simple way. We're just befriending those um, trying to see how the Lord is trying to help them little by little come back to him. our history, we were founded by Servant of God, Mother Mary Teresa, in 1920 in New York City. She was a Holy Cross sister first for about 33 years, I believe, and then she received an inspiration to start the community during that time, and it was about 20 years of waiting and praying and longing for it to start before it actually started. So we just thank God for her and for the inspiration. You have now entered a very special room of our community. This is the heritage room, the actual room where our mother founders died. This is the bed that she died in. In this room are many precious articles. Guests from all over come to this room to know about her and to honor her and to see the articles that she used. You can see the Bible, the family Bible that she was, that was actually in her family home growing up. You can see rosaries that she used, crucifixes, personal notes, books of her conferences, her final profession crown, and the pictures of her in various stages of her life. For instance, you can see the very first picture in this room of her where she is in the sodality of the children of Mary at the age of 18. She looks very similar to a picture of St. Therese, too. Many people have said so anyways. Um, the next picture that you see of Mother Founders is her as a Holy Cross sister, the teaching order that she was in for 33 years before founding the parish visitors of Mary Immaculate. And then the last picture in this room of her is as our founders, Mother Mary Teresa Talon. And now we have come to the most important place in our lives as parish visitors of Mary Immaculate. This is Mary Crest Chapel, the chapel of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In this privileged place, for over 50 years, postulants have been accepted, novices have been received, and sisters have made their final profession of vows. Come, let us see.
Welcome to our chapel at Mary Christ. As you can see, it's beautiful. This is where the sisters come to pray. Uh, we come for the divine office, and we come to adore our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, and most importantly, we come here for Mass. So you can see our Rarados in the front honors Our Lady, and we have the Sacred Heart on the left, and our special patron, St. Joseph, on the right, with the divine mercy at the altar, our Lord's merciful love calling us to him. But, um, so those are front and center, but actually in the back of the chapel, there is a very special place, a very privileged place, where our mother foundress, who founded our congregation, this is her sarcophagus. So this is where the sisters and anyone who want, wishes to come can come and pray where her body actually is. So it's extremely special, and she's in the process of becoming a saint. So we're hoping that many miracles will help further that cause along and um, get her to that point of being officially declared a saint in the church. The next part of our chapel that I'd like to show are our beautiful stained glass windows. This really depicts the heart of our spirituality, who we are as parish visitors of Mary Immaculate. First is Jesus knocking at the door. He is always knocking at the door of our hearts, and this really is the icon for our family visitation, home to home, person to person, just as our Lord knocked on the door looking for his lost sheep and trying to lift up the faith of everyone he encounters, so do we as parish visitors. The second one is Jesus bringing Holy Communion to the little children. Our mother foundress was very passionate about the Holy Communion age being lowered so that children would be able to receive as young as possible. This next window is Jesus giving Holy Communion to older, so adults. And this window also actually shows how Mother Foundress was also very passionate about frequent communion, about us being able to go and receive Jesus as much as possible because that is the thirst of his sacred heart. This window is Jesus embracing and teaching the little children, holding them close to his heart. And that's another part of our charism where we're trying to instruct the little children to come very close to Jesus and to know him very intimately. This window is Jesus being with St. Joseph when he was dying. And we always want to be, in our visitation, be reaching out to those who are close to death so that they can die in the arms of Jesus as well. This image is Mary and Joseph bringing the child Jesus into Egypt, fleeing from Herod. And this image shows how we, um, in our work, we often work with immigrants who are in great need of our help. And this stained glass window is showing how Jesus and little St. John the Baptist must have spent time together. And there's Elizabeth and Mary and how in our ministry, we often are teaching the children to be little disciples themselves. And lastly, this window is of the visitation where um, Mary is bringing Jesus within her womb to her cousin Elizabeth, and she's magnifying the Lord the whole time, and Elizabeth in her, her humility is saying, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And this is the spirit that we bring to our visitation, carrying Jesus within us to those that we're reaching out to. And lastly, this is our rose window in the back of our chapel. It's of the Immaculate Conception. And that is the choir loft, where is also the Angelus Bell, where many little postulants have begun to learn to fulfill the duties the Lord hath given them by ringing the Angelus Bell. So our contemplative life is a, the essential part of our daily schedule. We try to keep a spirit of prayer throughout the day centered around his most holy presence in the Eucharist. Um, Every aspect of our schedule is supposed to deepen our interior union with him, 
so that we can strive to live this life of deep communion with him. Mother Foundress said that all power comes from union with God. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. If we try to go out and give what we have to others and we have nothing within ourselves, well, we have nothing to give. So we're trying to always fill ourselves with the Lord to give the overflow to others. Um, Mother Foundress said, we are truly spouses of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, so daily Mass is the center. It's the most important part of our day. It's where we offer ourselves with Jesus to the Father. The next part of our day that is uh, crucial is our daily Eucharistic Holy Hour. It's where we spend this precious time directly with him in the Blessed Sacrament, we receive that deep outpouring of love from his heart. We come to know his desires more deeply. And then, as I said, give that overflow to everyone around us of his love. Mother Foundress also said that living with Jesus Eucharistic is an unspeakable privilege. So aside from those things that Sister Arena Marie mentioned, we also meditate for half an hour each day. We listen to the Lord speak to our hearts and we ponder his words and apply it to our own lives. And at the end of our meditation, we resolve to be a better religious, a better person. Mother Foundress recommended that we keep in our minds our morning meditation throughout the day because every holy thought lifts the soul to God. Yet some of you may ask, how can we have holy thoughts? One sure way is through holy reading, and that is reading sacred scriptures and other spiritual writings. Mother Foundress encourage us to read daily and to seek to know the mind and heart of Christ. By allowing holy thoughts to work in our souls, we learn to appreciate God and our faith more and more. And the overflow of this contemplation is what we actually bring to people we minister to. Another important part of our contemplative spirit is that we have silence and recollection throughout the day. This means that we are not talking unnecessarily and we try to do things quietly. You might wonder, why does that matter? But what we're really trying to do is to create a constant conversation in our heart or at least a, an acknowledgement of God's presence within us throughout the day. Um, Mother Founder said that the Lord had revealed to her that he wanted to rest in the sisters' recollected hearts and reign there as supreme Lord and master. So to foster this spirit of prayer, we try to keep a recollected atmosphere throughout each convent in the day. Um, when we are out in the apostolate, or visiting families or doing various catechetical ministries, of course, then we're, we're talking, um, but we are talking in a way that we hope reminds people um, that we're also in the presence of God in everything that we do. So we don't have a, um, a spirit of contemplation in the convent and forget about it when we walk out the door. It's important that every part of our life is in union with Christ. Uh, we go out in the spirit of the good shepherd as was mentioned before, with his heart that is constantly seeking the lost and the straying through many different forms of catechesis and evangelization. We go out in imitation of the Blessed Mother in her visitation, as mentioned before. And then another image you'll see frequently associated with us is Jesus knocking at the door. He's constantly knocking at the door of our hearts and he's waiting and longing for us to open up to him. Uh, in, the, in the picture, you'll often see that the handle is not there. It's only on the inside. So the other person has that freedom because our Lord is so gentle and he just invites and he waits. And that is our approach. And just trying to bring the person little by little as a friend to that a little bit closer to the heart of Jesus especially trying to reconnect them with their parish family, with the sacraments, confession, the most holy Eucharist, that food for their souls, 
that healing that they need to come back into full circle with the church, with their family in the Lord. Um, one of the concrete ways we do this is through door to door uh, visitation, evangelization on behalf of the pastor. We go out as their friend inviting and trying to bring people to that connection with the church again. We also do various catechetical ministries, such as religious education programs, youth groups, young adult ministry, Christian initiation, and many different kinds of ministries that are catechetical focused. This is how we walk into our convent at our mother house at Mary Crest, Monroe, New York. We have this beautiful glass door. It says, my soul magnifies the Lord. And this beautiful memorial over here that was set up in memory of uh, one of our sister's relatives who uh, died in 9-11. And they gave us that beautiful stained glass of the visitation. And then we walk in here and we end up in our dining room and this is our dining room usually bow to the crucifix when we come in the dining room and these sisters over here are doing something what are you doing sisters uh, we're preparing for a feast day a feast and day one of our um our postulant is entering the novitiate nice so what's the feast day today the Annunciation. Ah, I caught so you on the Feast of the Annunciation. Yeah, we're celebrating Our Lady's yes. Nice. To giving herself totally to the Lord and accepting what he's asked of her. Beautiful. Yeah. You look like you're doing a great job setting up. Thank you, sisters. Hey. Bye. Bye. Okay, wave goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.